Hi everyone, um, today I want to do a follow-up video on the tutorial I did to split up your Emacs init, init file, which is uh, a useful thing to do when it becomes too, becomes too large. And since I use that setup every day, I eventually decided to create um, a package to facilitate management of multiple init files. Um, so today we are going to go through this new tool I've written and how it works and what it does and um, I will prob I will do a follow-up video on this again uh, to go into the code uh, for those who are interested in trying to learn how Emacs Lisp works even though I'm a beginner myself I can share what I've done and uh, maybe other people can also participate or do their own thing um, all right so to start up I've got a brand a clean a clean setup of Emacs, almost clean. It only has a little bit of thing in its in it. So if we look, uh, my init.l just sets the font, so it's big enough for everyone to see, and uh, a, a basic theme, um, which is a little nicer on the eyes than the default. Uh, so nothing's installed. It's all vanilla. The modus vivendi comes with Emacs 28.2, um, and uh, is it 28.2? I think it is that. Yeah, 28.2. Um, so we are going to add a little bit of fluff uh, and pretend that this is a, a larger config. And the first thing I want to do is um, enable Melpa and install um, a package, for example, Paradit. And then I will try to break that up into a separate config file uh, and install the, the tool I've, I've written and see how to do that. And then we'll add a bit more config and see how it scales. All right, so let's start with the beginning and add uh, Paradit and add Melpa. So I'll open up the Emacs wiki that I have here, and I'll just grab um, I'll just grab the recipe to enable the package system and add Melpa. And then I'm going to so I'm going to eval that to begin with. All right, so eval, re eval region, okay, and I'm going to set queue uh, package selected packages, and it's going to be paradit. I only want paradit for now, so we'll do that. We'll eval it, and then I'm going to do meta x package install selected packages uh, packages are already installed are they okay paradit mode already there i think it was in my cache um, all right so paradit works uh, and it's installed so that's cool so the next thing we'll do is uh, i'm going to want to break this up uh, so i have the package specific config into one file and the GUI specific config into another file. And we'll see how that works. So uh, I'm going to split my frame. I'm going to look into my folder here. I want to install my um, config manager first and I want to do this outside of the package management um, tool. So. Um, that's not necessary. Like if you use Straight, for example, you could fetch it directly from from its Git repository through Straight. You you just have to have the Straight initialization in your init.l directly, which is okay. So it depends what you want to do. I prefer to have all my package management stuff in a config in its own config file. So I'm going to bring um, my package outside of the package manager, which is a little unfortunate, but it's manageable. So for that, I'm going to create a folder, uh, which I'm going to call elisp, and all my loadable elisp files I'll put in there, and for now there'll, there will be only one really. So I'll go in here and I'll create a file called punchcard.l, that's because that's the name of the package I've written, it's called punchcard. Um, because that's how you used to feed initialization data to very, very old computers for a punch card. And I'm going to look into that uh, source file here and I'm going to copy it wholesale and fill it here. 
All right. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to um, follow the readme in punch card. And it gives an example of how to how to enable it. And I'm going to do the same, exactly what is said here. So I'm adding to my load path this elise folder I just created. And then I'm going to require the punch card package. So if I, if I evaluate this region, region, okay, I've got no error. And now if I try to run a punch card uh, meta x command, I can see that there's four of them available. So the package was loaded correctly. Okay. So next, we are go I'm going to create a place to store all my split config files. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a folder called init in my emacs.d. And you can do that any anywhere you like, but that's the way I, I like it. Um, and I'm going to inform a uh, punch card that this is the place where I want my config to be. Now that's not necessary, you don't need to do this. Uh, there's a second step after that where we actually load the config files and if you haven't set the variable, punch card will set it automatically at that point. But I like to do it this way uh, because it's just cleaner in my opinion, it's more explicit. So we'll do setQ, um, punch card, conf dir. And we are going to set that to emacs.d uh, to, to slash init. Okay. All right, I've evaluated it. And now that lets me do, I'm going to move to the other window. And doing this lets me create the file um, through punch card itself. So there's a punch card find file which I could key bind, but I haven't. Um, but it, it's easier to see if I use MetaX anyway. So I'll run this and it asks me to choose a configuration. And I, I don't have any yet. So I, if, if I tab, I'm, I'm proposed no, no completion. So we'll, we'll just create one, which we'll call pa packages.el. And it's created a, a blank, it's created a config file for me with a template. Um, so I can just fill that template and the template is basically calling punch card which is a macro and then a list of, the, a list of dependencies and finally uh, the actual config. So I don't have any dependencies yet because the package system is built into Emacs so I'm go just going to copy, I'm going to leave it as nil which means no dependencies really and I'm going to copy my package initialization into it. So all of this, I'm going to copy here. All right, I'll save this. Okay, and then I'm going to want another uh, config file, which, gonna, which is going to be specifically for GUI stuff. So like f font size, font face, etc. So. I'll do another um, punch card find file. I'm going to call it GUI.L and I'm going to copy this over here. Okay. And now to actually load my configuration, I'm going to call in my main init.l, I'm going to call punch card, punch card load. Um, and I'm going to give it the conf dir again. Okay. So I should be able to run this and it should make almost no difference. And it did run and it didn't seemingly change anything. So the the way to check that it works really is to, <laughs> to kill Emacs and uh, start it again and see if it loads the um, the GUI, the GUI setting. So let's try it. Oh, I've exited Emacs and I'm going to start it again. Yeah, and we can see that it's picked up the um, Modus Vivendi theme and it also has uh, the right font size. 
Okay, so now we're going to do a bit more. So I'm going to go into emacs.d. Um, sorry, I'm going to visit the um, package file. And I'm going to want more packages. So I'd like to have um, a better a better looking um, theme. And uh, I hope it's available. Let's see. Nope. Uh, So I like the mood one theme these days and we'll see if it's available and it is with one theme. So I'm going to install that. Okay. So I can, I can evaluate uh, this particular section only by uh, just going at the end of the sexp and do uh, control X, control E to evaluate it. That's fine. Or I could evaluate the entire file by using the punch card um, load file. Punch card load file um, function command, which is going to run the actual file. So that, that should have evaluated the selected packages and now I can run a package install selected packages and it should go and fetch mood one theme which is exactly what it does so yes okay right so now uh, i want to switch my theme over so i'm going to do punch card find file i'm going to gui and i'm going to change it to mood one i think it's mood one Mood theme mood one yeah mood one Okay, so let's try that. Uh, I'll disable the current theme, so it's gonna be it's gonna flash white. So shield your eyes if that bothers you. Disable theme uh, and what does be Vendy? Okay, and I'm going to do punch card load file, and it's switched to mood one. So that worked. So now the issue we have is that really this configuration file depends on packages. Uh, so we need to we need to say that so they load in the right order. Uh, so if we look into um, at the moment, if we do package, sorry, punch card, uh, display dependencies, we can see that's the order in which the packages are loaded, in which the um, configuration files are loaded. So we have GUI and then packages. Uh, that that doesn't make sense because um, now our GUI really depends on packages. We, we must have mood one installed before we load the GUI. And so we want that in the right way. So we are going to express it here by adding a, a list and we are going to say that this depends on packages. Oops, wonky. key. Okay, so we'll do that and then uh, punch card load file. All right, so we'll do that. So that, that shouldn't have changed the dependencies. If I do um, punch card dependencies, we see that they stayed the same. Uh, that's because loading a single file doesn't actually affect uh, the, is an ad hoc operation. It doesn't persist. So we can just open the init.l, for example, we could run into uh, the evaluator. Well, I'll just, I'll just rerun the entire um, configuration loading process by evaluating this. And now it should have uh, updated the dependencies. So we'll see, punch card dependencies. There we go. So now we can see that uh, the GUI config depends on packages and that's loaded after the packages and packages doesn't have any dependencies. Cool, so we can try and add another one. Since we have Paradit installed, uh, I'm going to create punch card find file, I'm going to create um, elisp, let's say elisp.l and that's going to depend on packages as well packages alright and I'm going to uh, add a mode hook so add hook to uh, emacs lisp oops emacs lisp hook 
and that's going to be power edit mode because having power edit enabled is very useful when edited when editing Lisp. So we are going to do punch card load file. Okay, and now if I re revisit uh, this file, it doesn't work for some reason. I don't give Max this book. Let me guess, it's actually a Max Emacs list mode hook. Okay, let's try again. Punch card load file. Let's reopen the file, and now we see paraded here at the bottom. Cool, so that worked well. Now we are going to, just to make my point, <laughs> I'm going to reopen the uh, package file and I'm going to add a yes snippet. And yes snippet, snippets, I think it's called. So we'll eval that again, so punch card load file. Okay, and we'll do package install selected packages. Yeah, proceed. Okay, so a bit of patience. Okay, now we'll configure yes snippets. So we'll do um, punch card find file, and we'll call it yes snippet. Uh, L, I don't remember. Um, yes, snippet. So I, I know I have some um, yes, snippet config files. I don't remember what they are. So we'll pretend that uh, this is useful. Uh, SH does nothing. Yes, snippet does stuff. Okay. And now we'll have um, the ELISP. Yes, it's still open. Now our ELISP, uh, we'll, we'll want to add the snippet to our, our ELISP uh, config file. Um, so we can use snippets when we, when we are coding, which is a useful thing to do. So we'll want to add another hook. Uh, yes, what's it called? Yes, something. Oops. Yes, uh, yes minor mode. Let's do yes minor mode. Okay, but now um, that means our Lisp config file doesn't only depend on packages anymore. It also depends on having the yes snippet configuration run. So we'll do yes snippet, and this needs to be this need to be um, this need to be strings. Yes, I know there's a better way to do it in Paradit. I just haven't learned it yet. Okay, so this should um, this should set our loading order to make sure yes snippet loads before Lisp. Uh, so I think we're gonna close Emacs and give it a go and see if it works the way it should. So let's make sure everything's saved. Close Emacs. I'm going to start it again. All right, and so let's take a look. So if I run punch card, display dependencies, I can see it learns, it loads packages first, then yes snippet, and yes snippet depends on yes snippet. I think I did something wrong there. Yes snippet, yes, that's the wrong dependency. Okay, let's, let's give it another go. So you can see it doesn't manage uh, cyclic dependencies yet. It should probably throw a, an error or a warning, but it doesn't do that. Um, punch card dependencies. All right, so now we can see packages loads first, then yes snippet, which depends on packages, GUI, which depends on packages, and Lisp, which depends on packages and yes snippet. And if I do punch card uh, find file, Let's say we want to edit Lisp. 
uh, we can see that YASNIPET and uh, Paredit are both loaded. So our config is actually having an effect. All right, and if we take a look at our uh, init.l, we can see if it wants to load. Yes, it did load. We can see that it's, it's quite minimal. Um, we only have this many lines of code. Uh, we can remove this one, actually, like I mentioned earlier, because running punch card load actually will set the um, convdr variable to this value. So that, that that's enough in most use cases. Cool. I hope you like this introduction into punch card and what it does and how it helps. And um, if you have any comments or suggestion, please feel free to leave it under the video and thanks everybody for watching. See you around.